Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my 1 to 99 farming guide. Farming is a very passive skill, the most passive in the game, but it's commonly a fairly tough 99 since it can be difficult to get into the habit of actually taking your farming runs. There's a ton of little things about farming that you could either miss me saying in the video of this length, or I could have forgotten it completely, so if you have any questions about the guide, feel free to throw them in the comments section below. This guy's gonna be a little different than the other 99 guides I have out there. I'll have a typical leveling guide that tells you at what levels you should plant what things, but there's a a lot of information that I'll talk about beforehand. I will start as always with the quests that can give you a jump in your farming XP which are pretty important for farming. Then we'll talk about some helpful items for farming. There's a lot of different sort of gear that you can use so it is possible I'll mention some of these helpful items outside of this section but for the most part that's where they'll be all stored up. Next I'm going to discuss the farming guild and what they added into the game including the Hispori which is an interesting farming boss. I will then go over the main types of farming patches you will use and how you can plant and grow things in those patches. Not only will I teach you how to plant in these patches but then I'll show the locations and some possible ways to get there. That's when we'll finally get into the leveling guide, which even though I'll tell you what I did at each level, there's a lot of room for just doing your own thing. There's not like one specific way you have to do it, of course. After going through the leveling guide and the discussion on which farming runs that I do at which levels, I'll talk about some farming mini games which provide slightly different alternatives. And my original plan was to end the guide with an actual sped up version of my full herb runs and tree runs, but uh, that's going to take a little bit too long, so I've actually made a second part to this video that should be linked in the description and should be fairly easy to find because it'll just be called a guide add-on for this farming guide, similar to how I did it for my Jad guide. Let's start with some simple questing life. You can do a ton of your early farming through quests, and if you do all the quests that I have on this list, for the most part in this order, it would get you to 34 farming without having to do any regular farming stuff. Doing quests for early levels is often faster than early leveling, and it's very important just to get quests done in general, so you might as well do it. And if you want even more quests for farming XP, I've left a link in the description to the wiki's page on that full list. Before we get into the helpful items, let's talk about the Tool Leprechaun real quick. There's one located basically at every farming patch, and he can hold your tools for you. Leprechauns share an envy, so it's basically like a small bank for farming. One of the most convenient parts is how much compost that you can store in here. Also, things that you've harvested can be used on a Tool Leprechaun to note that item. I'm going to start this next section off with Magic Secateurs, which are a reward from the Fairy Tale Part 1 quest, which was also something that I brought up in the quest you should do anyway. If you wield this while you're harvesting like an herb patch, you're going to gain an extra 10% herbs from that patch. We'll discuss herb patches in further detail soon, but it is a solid bonus, mostly for GP, a little bit for XP too. The patches that this works on aren't often used to get a lot of XP anyway, so that little bit of a boost, it's a boost, but doesn't make a huge difference. These can be stored in your Tool Leprechaun. Compost can be used on a patch to decrease the likelihood of that patch actually getting diseased and dying. Not only will it do that, but it increases the yield from herbs, hops, and allotment patches. So, less dead plants and larger harvests makes using compost very worthwhile. Compost can be made by putting plants and weeds into a compost bin and letting it rot. Later, you can collect from the compost bins with a bucket to get a bucket of compost. Higher level plants will make super compost, which boosts all effects of the compost. And you can use volcanic ash on either a bucket of super compost or a compost bin with super compost in it make ultra compost which is even stronger giving a 9 out of 10 chance for your plants to grow and of course it will add to how much you get from a plant when harvesting so if you have the ability to make ultra compost use your ultra compost if you're trying to make your own super compost pineapples tend to be a very cheap and easy way to do it but if you're not an iron man just buy some super compost Farming outfit is a reward from the Tithe Farm. If you want more information about the Tithe Farm, that's going to be towards the end of the video. And hopefully I put a timestamp in the description. I also have a full guide to the Tithe Farm if you just want to look that up. Each piece of the outfit will give some bonus farming XP if you wear it during your farming activities. The outfit consists of four pieces, the hat, torso, legs, and boots. The full outfit gives 2.5% bonus XP, which is not huge, but it does help a little bit. Not very many players like the Tithe Farm, so they just skip the outfit, but you get solid XP while you're there, especially if you're 74 plus farming before you get there. And you get more XP for each farming run from now on, which means less farming runs for 99, and less seeds used, which is nice for growing expensive things like trees. There are a lot of magic spells that can be very helpful for farming training. First of all, teleports are very important. The more teleport options you have, the better, since there's just a ton of running when it comes to farming. Outside of teleporting though, there's some other spells that can be utilized for farming. Really all of them are on the Lunar Spellbook for the most part, so you do need to get Lunar Diplomacy done for them. I'll start with Geomancy, which requires 65 farming to use. Geomancy is used to check your crops without having to actually go to the plant. You can use Geomancy from anywhere, and it's going to show you all of your crops and how far along they are in the growth stage, and some other helpful things like if they're protected or if you use compost. 
The Cure Plant spell required 66 magic and is fairly self-explanatory. If you run up on a patch and one of your plants is currently diseased, this spell can be used instead of a plant cure to cure it. Thing is, plant cures are a lot cheaper and they can be stored in the tool leprechaun, so people tend to use those more often. If you get to your plant and it's already dead, the Cure Plant spell isn't going to work. You can't cure a dead plant. If you've unlocked the Archaea spellbook and you have at least 78 magic, you can use the Resurrect Crops spell. You're not guaranteed to bring a plant back to life, and if it doesn't, you don't get a second chance, unfortunately. So you get one try to maybe revive a plant. It'll clear the patch out for you if it doesn't work, and you can't bring a plant back to life a second time if it dies again. The higher your magic level is, the better your chances of bringing a plant back to life. Last spell I got on this list is Fertile Soil. The Fertile Soil patch is the same as using Super Compost on a patch. It's especially convenient if you're an Iron Man, you want to stop making compost. If you do a little Volcanic Mine, you can unlock the Ash Covered Tome. When you read the tome, you can now bring Volcanic Ash with you, and for two Ash per patch, you can use Fertile Soil as Ultra Compost instead of Super Compost. The Farming Guild was pretty recently added to the game, and not only gave us more patches from existing plants, but some new things to plant too. You need 45 farming to get into the farming guild, and there are three sections to the guild, kind of an easy, medium, and hard. That medium area requires 65, and the high level area you need 85 farming to access. There is a bank chest available for the default section of the guild, but there's also a full bank in the level 85 section. The easiest way to get to the farming guild is with a skilling necklace teleport, it just brings you right there, but also there's a fairy ring pretty close by, and the code is CIR. You are going to need 60% favor to get into the farming guild. I'll discuss how all these plants work in a moment, but the guild does have three unique patches you can't find anywhere else. The Amina patch, the Celestris patch, and a Redwood patch. There's also a compost bin in the guild that holds 30 spots for compost instead of the usual 15, which is fairly convenient. One unique aspect of the farming guild is farming contracts. Farming contracts are basically slayer for farming. You just ask the guild master for an easy, medium, or hard contract with those same required levels as before. She'll ask you to grow something in the guild, and once you harvest the plant or check the health when it's fully grown, you can collect a seed pack from the guild master. If you get a contract that's too difficult, you can just ask Jane for a contract from one of the lower tiers, but if the beginner tier contract is too difficult for you, I can't really help you out. Higher level contracts do give better seeds. There's actually five tiers of contracts, even though you can only pick easy, medium, or hard. The length of the contract can add tiers, so really a, a long high level contract is considered tier five, like having to grow a magic tree for something. Higher tiers give better seeds, obviously, and the lower tiers not only have lower chances at decent seeds, but you you can't get some of the higher tier seeds at all. So in other words, if you want better seed packs, you should be doing harder contracts. The farming contracts are more helpful for Ironmen than Normies, but they are a good source for Hespori seeds, which we'll move on to now. The Hespori is a farming boss located in the farming guild. You need to grow the boss before you can fight it, surprisingly requiring a Hespori seed. These seeds can be obtained from just about any regular farming. When you finish harvesting a plant or checking the health of a tree, you have a chance of getting a Hespori seed. As I mentioned before, you can get it from seed packs too. You need 65 farming to get into the second area of the guild, which is where you can plant the Hespori seed. You don't need to water or protect the Hespori since it will not disease. It does take about a day to a day and a half to grow, and you can check if the Hespori is fully grown by using the plant outside of the cave. When you go to harvest the Hespori, it will attack you, though it's a pretty simple fight. At full health, two-thirds health, and one-third health, you'll need to attack the flowers around the room or else you can't hurt the Hespori. You can be poisoned, so an anti-poison is pretty helpful, but it's a short fight, so it won't matter very much. The Hespori uses magic and range to protect from whichever you have lower defense in, usually magic, but it doesn't really matter much at all. It also has an attack that will bind you to whatever spot you're standing on. You need to try and run away from this entanglement, and not just like click once to run away. You kind of have to spam click a different spot until you finally get free, or else it can hit up to a 40 plus. Once the Hespori is dead, you can harvest it for some seeds. It has a few valuable seed drops, but the unique ones are the white lily seeds and the animus seeds, which we'll discuss in a second. The Hespori can also drop a bottomless compost bucket. The bottomless bucket can hold up to 10,000 of any type of compost, but only one type at a time. When you use the bucket on a compost bin or buckets of compost, one bucket it gives two charges to the bottomless bucket. So in other words, you would only need 5,000 buckets of compost to fill the bottomless bucket with 10,000 charges. The Anima Patch is located right by the cave where you would fight the Hespori. These work differently than normal patches, and since the next section of the guide is to go through different patches, we're going to return to these in just a minute. Let's discuss the basics of a farming patch, from a patch of full weeds to a fully grown plant. Most patches generally work the same, but we'll start with the allotment patches, which is where you grow fruits and veggies for the most part. As you arrive at the patch, it should be full of weeds, unless of course you just harvested something right out of it. You need a rake to rake the weeds out of the patch, and once you've fully emptied the patch, you can now plant seeds in there. As a quick note, you can also use your compost now, or after you plant the seeds, it doesn't really matter. I usually use my compost right away, because it's easier to click on the patch when there's not like a tiny plant in it. For example, herb patches, if you use your compost after planting it, you'll notice what I'm talking about right away. To plant seeds, you're going to need a seed 
seed dibber. Allotment patches are large, so you need three seeds per patch, but this is not the case for most patches. Use the seeds on an empty patch with a dibber in your inventory, and you plant the seeds. Now your plants are going to grow on their own. Each plant grows in different cycles. For example, watermelons take 80 minutes to grow, but they'll do it in eight 10-minute cycles. For each growing stage, a plant can become diseased. If you don't use a plant cure or the cure plant spell on it before the end of that disease stage, the plant's going to die. You can water a living plant to guarantee it does not die during that growth phase, but at the end of that phase, you need to rewater it for the next phase, so very few people take the time to water their plants, because then you have to keep coming back every like 10 minutes. You can also pay nearby farmers to protect most plants. I am giving this farmer 10 noted curry leaves and they're now protecting my watermelons, guaranteeing they'll be fully grown later. If you need to know what to pay to have a plant protected, open up your leveling guide by clicking on the farming skill icon. All of the plant payments should be listed with the plants and leveling requirements. In general, this little in-game farming guide has a lot of information you might need. Once you've got a fully grown plant, you can harvest it with a spade. With a higher farming level, and if you use some sort of compost, you'll get more stuff from whatever you're harvesting. If your inventory fills up, which it probably will, you can use the produce on the tool leprechaun and he will note it for you. Once you're done harvesting, replant some seeds and start again. That's really how a farming patch works for the most part. As I move on to other patches, if you have any questions on how they work, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. There's eight allotment patches in the game, each location having two patches other than the spot on Harmony Island, giving you 15 total patches to work from. I don't really suggest doing allotment runs outside of maybe planting the seeds during your herb runs, since a lot of herb patches are close to allotment patches. For that reason, I'm not really going to go over traveling to each allotment patch, since most of them will be discussed in a second anyways. And if at any point you're wondering how to travel to a specific patch, all the information that you can need about patch location is listed on the wiki, and I've left a link to that in the description. Rather than growing plants and harvesting the anima patches, these plants last for a few days and all they do is give bonus effects on all the other plants you have going on in the game. They cannot be diseased and they will always complete their full growth cycle until they die. There's only one anima patch, but there are three different types of seeds that you can use requiring 76 farming. If you have a living Kronos plant in your anima patch, all of the plants will have a small chance to skip a growth stage. All of the plants of that type skip a growth stage too, so you won't have one of your many plants done sooner than the others, that'd be a waste of time. So in other words, if you were growing trees and you had a Kronos plant, there's a chance that one of those growth stages, every tree you had planted would skip it. The eyesore seed when planted will decrease the likelihood of any of your other plants getting diseased. This is probably the least commonly used one, but still can be helpful for saving some seeds. And lastly, the Addis plant will increase your yield when harvesting, and in most cases this means you're just getting more herbs. Herb patches work similarly to allotment patches with only a few differences. Herb patches cannot be protected by a farmer and they only require a single seed to plant. There's nine herb patches in the game, five of them are near allotment patches, four of them are on their own. Herbs are mostly used for money making since they don't give a ton of XP. They take 80 minutes to grow and it doesn't take too long to harvest all of your patches if you have good teleports, so it makes pretty good money for not requiring much of your time. The wiki has a great page that can tell you which herb seeds will make you the most money at which levels and I've left a link to that in the description. A quick note when harvesting your herbs. I don't know if this goes for any other plant. I've really not noticed it, but if you kind of spam click a few times when you go to harvest, it will start to harvest it slightly faster. It doesn't save a ton of time, but realistically, if you're doing a lot of herb runs, it'll save a decent amount of time in the long run. I'll go over a basic idea of an herb run in a minute, but first let's talk about the location of each herb patch and how to get there. I'll start with the patches that are located with allotment patches. The first patch we have is just south of Falador. The best teleport here is an Explorer's Ring, which is a reward from the Lumbridge and Draenor Medium Diaries. You can get one from any diary, but you need at least the Medium Diaries to get the teleports. If you get your Hard Diaries done, you get unlimited teleports instead of just three per day, which is very convenient. Otherwise, you could just use an Amulet of Glory to go to Draenor, a Skills Necklace to go to the Mining Guild, or even a Falador teleport will get the job done. Next we go out east past Canifus to find an allotment patch with an herb patch as its friend. If you do the Ghost Ahoy quest, then you'll get an Ecto Feel, which is easily the simplest teleport to get you there. Otherwise, there is a close fairy ring with the code ALQ. There's an allotment slash herb patch north of Catherby. There is a Catherby teleport on the Lunar Spellbook for 87 magic, but even the Camelot teleport gets you pretty close. North of Ardoin, you'll find another group of these patches. The Articloak 2 can teleport you right here, similar to the Explorer's Ring for the Fally patch, and if you've done the Hard Diaries or higher, you'll get those unlimited tellies per day rather than the three. A Skills Necklace to the Fishing Guild is not a bad teleport. Otherwise, I would just teleport to Arty or even Camelot and make the run south. Technically, the last herb patch that's accompanied with an allotment patch is in the Hosidius House. The Xerix Glade teleport and the Xerix Talisman is a super fast and easy way to get there. I highly suggest it. 
Now we can move on to the patches that are only an herb spot. First of all, you've got this rooftop patch which requires completing my arm's big adventure. If you've done the quest, then you should know how to get here, but your best teleport option for the patch is the Trollheim teleport. Unless you've done making friends with my arm, then you could use the Stony Basalt teleport. This is a disease-free patch since your buddy, my arm, will be looking after it for you. Also, if you've completed making friends with my arm, you get another disease-free patch located in Weiss. Weiss? I don't know how to say it. Again, if you've done the quest, you should know how to get here, but the fastest teleport is some icy basalt this time. You also have to build a nearby fire to use this patch, which is going to require 35 construction. The patch on Harmony Island requires the completion of the Mauritania Elite Diaries to use. There is a Harmony Island teleport spell on the Archaea Spellbook requiring 65 magic. This means there's also Harmony Island tabs that you could buy. You can also use the Ecto Field to get to Port Phasmatis and then take Bill Teach's boat, whoever takes you to Mostly Harmless. From there, brother, whoever can take you to the island, which you should know all of this if you've done your diaries, which is why I'm kind of speeding through it. Lastly, we have the patch in the Farming Guild, which is really close to the allotment patch in the lower level area, but technically it's a separate patch. You need to get 65 farming to get into this area of the Farming Guild, and like I mentioned before, the best ways to get there are the Skills Necklace or the CIR Fairy Ring. Here's what my envy looks like for a typical herb setup. This is obviously only for herbs, so if you plan on planting allotments too, don't forget those seeds and protection payments. The amount of seeds that you bring with you obviously depends on how many patches that you're going to do, and you do not need all nine patches for herb runs to be worth it. After that, I've got my farming tools, including the Magic Secateurs, and then a bunch of teleports. Your exact teleports might look different, which is why I just went over how to get to certain locations. Like I mentioned, I am linking a version of this video that only shows me doing some farming runs. That way, you can get a full look at it. If you still don't quite get what I mean by a farming run, by the way, it just means going to each farming spot, harvesting, and then replanting the seeds. Other than the first run where you're only planting seeds, it's really as simple as that. If you've done the Bone Voyage quest and you have 23 farming, you can plant seaweed spore to grow giant seaweed in the underwater area. Giant seaweed grows very quickly, taking only about 40 minutes to grow. There are two patches you can farm them in, and you can pay to have them protected for 200 Numelite per patch. In general, it's more worth just using Ultra Compost rather than paying the Numelite, but that's because mostly Iron Men grow the plant. If you could just go buy your Numelite, go ahead and protect it because it's pretty cheap, but also you should be using the best compost you have to get more giant seaweed when you harvest. Giant seaweed is used for crafting XP in the long run, but growing it has a pretty solid chance of getting you the farming pet, especially since you can do seaweed runs so often. I decided I won't be throwing these into the leveling guide part of this video. They're not insane for XP and mostly should be used for irons or pet hunters, but you could do them for a little bit of extra farming XP. Now let's get into the big plants, the trees. This is really the uh, long section of the guide in a way. We'll start with regular tree patches, which there are six of in the game. Trees take a long time to grow. Obviously, the lower level ones are a little bit faster, but for the most part, you can expect to take a tree run every eight hours or whenever you feel like it. I've placed a screenshot of the wiki's table on some useful tree information. I will be showing this again in the leveling section of the guide. Instead of just planting tree seeds into a patch, you need to plant it into a pot of dirt and then water that planted seed. It'll soon grow into a sapling and saplings can be planted into a patch. You do need a spade to transfer the sapling from planted pot to patch. Saplings are also tradable, so you can buy them from Grand Exchange if you're not an Iron Man. I don't suggest making your own saplings, though that actually is a way to make money, buying seeds, making saplings, and then selling the saplings off. Trees can be protected, and some higher level trees can be pretty expensive to protect, so some players just use Ultra Compost and Resurrect Crop, but tree seeds can also add up, so it really depends on your setup. I like the idea of less dead trees, meaning less tree runs, so I usually decide to just protect the trees. When a tree is fully grown, you just have to check its health, and you get a big XP drop. It doesn't seem like a ton of XP off the bat since you waited so many hours to get to that point, but you can do a bunch of other stuff while you're waiting for it, so it really doesn't require much of your time. Now let's go over the locations of the trees. Like I said, there are six in the game. First, you've got one right behind the Lumbridge Castle. The only reasonable teleport to use is a Lumbridge Tele, of course. You could buy Lumbridge Teleport tabs off the GE, or you could bring house tabs if you have portals in your house. You could just use the actual spell, but a lot of people are not on the standard spell book when they're doing farming, so the tabs can be helpful. Next, we have the Varok Palace, which is easiest to get to with a simple Varok teleport. There is a spirit tree nearby that you could use to get there, but I actually use this spirit tree to get to the next patch that we'll talk about, which is located right outside of the Stronghold Slayer Cave, very close to another spirit tree. You could also use a Slayer Ring to get to that one faster. Now we're headed to Falador. I find the Falador teleport to be nice and simple since you can still just use a house tab, but a charged ring of wealth can teleport you right to the garden, so if you have a good jewelry box in your house, that's probably your best option. If you do complete your elite Falador Diaries, then this patch becomes disease-free, which is kind of nice. And also, if you have the medium diaries done, then you at least get an extra 10% XP from the patch, which is also kind of nice. 
There is a tree patch in Taverly too. If you have no good teleport options, it's a very short run from the Falador Garden patch that we were just on. Otherwise, the Taverly teleport tab or just having your house there can be a little bit faster. The sixth and final tree patch is in the Farming Guild. It's in the mid-level section, so you are going to need 65 farming to get to it. And as I mentioned earlier, the fastest way to get there is that skills necklace or the jewelry box, but the fairy ring nearby can work pretty well. When I do a tree run, I often do them in the order that I just showed the patches, though it doesn't really have to be in that order at all. A typical envy includes six tree saplings and protection payments, my farming tools, coins so that I can pay the farmer to remove the tree for 200 coins per tree. Otherwise, you have to bring an axe with you, which is going to take longer. And then I have house tabs to teleport to Lumbridge, Varrock, Falador, and the Farming Guild. Again, I'll be showing those full runs in that separate video that I've linked in the description. There are also six fruit tree patches in the game. They grow just about the same as regular trees, but when you check the health of them, you can now harvest some fruit from it. The tree will keep growing fruit back for you to harvest if you keep just picking the plants, but you can only check the health of the tree one time for that big XP drop. It's best to just harvest the fruit the one single time and then just replant a brand new tree. Here's a look at the table for how long each plant takes to grow and what you need to pay to have it protected. As you can see, fruit trees take a lot longer than regular trees, so very often you're going to be doing a fruit tree maybe every other tree run depending on which regular trees you're growing. Let's go over those locations real quick. I'll start with the fruit tree in the gnome stronghold since it's very close to the regular tree patch that I already mentioned earlier. I often hit this one up with the other tree, meaning that I just use the spirit tree to get here, but you can also use the balloon system and achievement cape teleport, which is some high level stuff, or even the royal seed pod will get you pretty close. Next, we have a patch near the tree gnome village. You can use the fairy ring code CIQ, or there's another spirit tree pretty close as long as you have Elkoi lead you out of this maze. There is a tree in Lietta, which is the elven town that you unlock during Morning's End Part 1. The only reasonable way to get here is to use the teleport crystal. You get one from the quest, and you can stack up these crystals by killing the elves in the town. Catherby does have a fruit tree patch just at the base of White Wolf Mountain. The best way to get there is the Catherby teleport on the Lunar Spellbook, which requires 87 magic. You could also use the gnome glider or the charter ships, and on lower level accounts, just using a Camelot teleport really does a fine job. There's a tree patch in Brimhaven, and I find it simplest just to use the charter ships from Catherby to Brimhaven just to get from spot to spot here. You could plant a spirit tree nearby for a faster teleport, or even have your house in Brimhaven and then use a house teleport. Finally, we have the patch in the Farming Guild, which I have discussed how to get to multiple times. This patch does require 85 farming to use it since it's in the high level area. A typical fruit tree run includes regular trees, so I take the envy that I had before and I make sure to add my saplings and payments for the new trees. As for extra teleports, I still mostly just use house tabs for things like the Catherby teleport and fairy ring stuff. I've also got my crystal teleport seed there. Don't forget to bring a Draman staff if you don't have your Elite Lumbridge diaries done and you plan on using the fairy rings. And if you were just bringing coins to clear out regular trees, you're now going to be clearing out some fruit trees, you might want to bring extra coins. There are three hardwood patches in the game, but they are located on Fossil Island, so you do need to do the Bone Voyage quest. You can plant either Teak Saplings or Mahogany Saplings in these patches, which requires 35 and 55 farming respectively. Protecting a Teak tree requires 15 Limpwort roots, and protecting a Mahogany tree requires 25 Yanillion hops. These each take multiple days to grow, so you don't really need to think too much about adding them to your consistent tree runs. A couple of times a week, though, you can harvest all three patches, which is a really solid boost, since it only takes you a minute. The best way to get there is the Fossil Island Teleport on the Dig Site Pendant, which you should have gotten after doing the quest to get to the island. There's a couple of special trees in the game, starting with Spirit Trees, which I just mentioned having one planted in the last section. You need 83 farming to even plant a Spirit Tree, but if you want to have multiple planted, you're going to need higher farming. You'll unlock two trees at a time at 91 and unlimited trees at 99. The Spirit Tree that you can plant in your house doesn't count towards your limit, and it doesn't give good farming XP either, so you really shouldn't use it for training. Spirit Trees take two and a half days to fully grow, and you can have them protected with five monkey nuts, one monkey bar, and a ground Suqua Tooth. Spirit Seeds are fairly rare, so you won't get most of your farming XP from these, but it is a nice bonus since you get about 20k XP per seed. There are five Spirit Tree patches other than the one in your house. First, we'll go back to Brimhaven, since I already discussed how to get there just a minute ago. This is a pretty popular one to start with, since it's helpful for your other tree runs. Then we have the patch in Port Serum in the northern end, and Explorer's Ring Teleport or the Amulet of Glory is going to get you here fastest. There's another patch on Ectaria, which is the island attached to Miscellanea. You unlock this patch by doing Throne of Miscellanea. There's a Teleport on the Ring of Wealth that gets you really close, and there's a Fairy Ring on the other side of the island with the code CIP. There is a patch at the Hosidius House on Zaya that requires 35% favor in the Hosidius House. A fast teleport to get here is the Skills Necklace to the Farming Guild, but also a Xerix Talisman to Xerix Glade will get you very close.
And the last spirit tree patch I've got for you is in the farming guild. You need 85 farming to get into that section so you can grow the tree. It's really not common to actually do spirit tree runs since you don't have a lot of seeds and they don't grow very quickly, obviously. So I won't actually be showing a setup for a full run. Just anytime you have extra seeds, you know those five patches are now. You might as well plant them because it'll be a little bit of bonus farming XP. A Calqua tree requires 72 farming and only has one patch in the whole game located on Karamja, north of Taibu Wanai. The fastest way to get there is the Taibu Wanai teleport, but you can also just run south from Brimhaven, which I discussed how to get to before, making it pretty easy to just add these to one of your regular farming runs. There's also a fairy ring pretty far south with the code CKR. The tree takes almost 22 hours to grow, so you can basically just do one a day, throwing it again on one of those random runs. You can protect the tree with eight poison ivy berries, and similar to a fruit tree, it can be harvested for some calquats, though they're pretty useless. Next, we have the newly added crystal tree, which is located in Privdinus, and that's the last time I'm going to say that correctly. It requires Song of the Elves to be completed. You need 74 farming to grow this tree, and to get a crystal sapling, you need a crystal acorn, which is untradeable. You can trade in other crystal seeds to Pennant, who lives near the patch, for a crystal acorn, or they can received as a reward from the elven crystal chest which requires an enhanced crystal key as far as i've seen just getting a crystal weapon seed and trading it in for a crystal acorn is generally the easiest way to do it when you plant a crystal sapling you can't protect it because it can't be diseased which is kind of nice but it's also still suggested to use ultra compost since when the tree is fully grown after eight hours and after you check the health of it you can harvest it for crystal shards and you'll get more crystal shards if you use better compost there is a spirit tree located very close to the patch, but there's also that crystal teleport seed that takes you to Prifendos, so it's up to you how to get there. At 85 farming, you can now grow Celestris seeds in the high level area of the farming guild. There's only one patch to farm these, and it takes just over 13 hours to grow. It's kind of an odd time to, again, consistently add them to your tree runs, but anytime that you're at the farming guild and the tree is ready to harvest, it only takes you a second to check the health, and you get 14k farming XP. Also, harvesting the plant will give you some Celestris bark, which is not too bad for making some money back since it can be used to make battle staves. The saplings themselves are pretty expensive due to the fact that you can make money from the branches and it requires eight potato cactus to protect the tree. Finally, for the trees and for this basic farming overview section, we're going to end with the redwood trees. There's one redwood tree patch located in the farming guild. You do need 90 farming to plant the redwood tree, and it requires six dragon fruit to protect the plant. It takes about four and a half days to grow, which is insane since it only gives you about 22k XP in the long run. But again, it only takes a couple minutes to do this out of every four and a half days. It's not going to be a lot of XP per day, but the actual time it requires you to do it, it's some of the best XP per hour you can get for farming life. Those are all the patches that I wanted to talk about for the most part. This isn't every patch in the game. I've skipped over some things like flowers and bushes, for instance. So if you still have any questions about patches specifically, let me know in the comments section below. Now we can get into the leveling guide a little bit. Like I said, this is going to be different than my other leveling guides. I'm still going to go from 1 to 99, talking about what I would plant and what your reasonable options are. But rather than just from level A to level B, do one thing and then move on, you'll see more things along the lines of like from level A+, plus, you can start adding more things to your farming runs. This means if you're level 70 and you've just skipped the 70 plus section, there's a chance that I mentioned something earlier that you might have wanted to know. If that's absolutely too much for you, I'll do a speed run overview of this leveling guide right at the end of the section. As with any of my guides, this won't be every single way that you can train farming, just the methods that I prefer. And if you're right at level 1 farming, just do some quests. It's so much more worth your time. Another option right at level 1 includes the Sorceress's Garden. This is a mini game more focused around thieving, but you can get some farming XP with very little effort and skip some of those useless early farming levels if you hate questing. For more info on the Sorceress's Garden, you have to wait until later in this video or just skip it using the timestamps in the description. From 1 to 15, if you refuse to do any quests or the garden, I guess it's time to just start planting potatoes. You'll unlock a few things in these first levels for the most part, just hang out at allotment patches though. You could do full allotment runs and rake some extra weeds at each patch, make your own compost out of them and try to get some bonus XP, but nothing you do at these levels is really going to do much XP wise. No matter which plants you decide to do though, if you're skipping quests or like the Sorcerer's Garden, you're probably not going to enjoy it. Once you hit 15 farming, you can now plant oak trees, so technically you can now just start doing your tree runs for the rest of your cape. Oak trees are pretty low in terms of XP, but you're also pretty low level, so again, you don't need a lot of XP to get to the next stage. Acorns are what you use to make oak saplings, though of course you can just buy saplings. Each tree requires a basket of tomatoes to be protected. You can still continue with allotment patches at this point if you wanted to. With 15 farming, you can make up to tomatoes, which is better for XP than potatoes, but most players just like to do tree runs here and only really do allotment patches for the higher level plants. If your only goal here is just to gain some passive farming XP, just stick to tree runs. 
Here's that table for the regular trees which shows which tree you can do at which level. It is highly suggested to just move on to the next tree as soon as you unlock it, but I will talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. At 27, you can now start growing apple trees, which is your first fruit tree option. That means from this point on, you should be doing tree runs with the best tree you can, and every 16 hours or so, that should also include a bunch of fruit trees in your tree runs. Any other patches that you add is going to add some farming XP, but also requires more of your time for not being as big of an XP drop as trees. So if you only care about 99 farming, just doing tree runs is the simplest and most reasonable way to do it. Here's another look at which trees that you can do at which level. You want to move on to the next tree at right as you unlock it, but eventually trees do get expensive and not everybody has the same budget. I find if you have less cash to spend overall, it's not a bad idea to max out with maple trees and pineapple trees. You're going to have to make a judgment call on which plants you can and can't afford though, and since all the information you need on planting trees and fruit trees is right here, I'm not going to be telling you which trees to change at for which level. This is your last heads up on how your regular tree runs work. At 35 farming, you can do your hardwood patches starting with teak trees. This ends up being a little over 20k XP every two, almost three days. But since they're so quick to check and you're still relatively low level, this is very beneficial to add to your farming runs. Like I said in the earlier section, they're not as easy to just add consistently since they take so much more time than other trees. But you only have to remember to do them two or three times a week, so that's not really that bad. And when you get to 55 farming, it's definitely worth upgrading to mahogany trees. I said this with the other trees too, but mahogany saplings are super cheap, so you really don't have much of an excuse not to upgrade. Once you hit 38 farming, you can start planting toad flax in your herb patches. Your farming level has a small effect on how many herbs you get, but overall your compost and items that you have like magic secateurs, that's what's going to make the big difference. And this is how you should decide on which herbs you plant. Toad flax are very commonly one of the better ones for how much money you make per seed, which is why I use it as the milestone part for this guide. But if you have ultra compost and magic secateurs and you're using some of those disease free patches, you could plant something more risky like Ronars since it will pay off a little more in the long run. Ronars only require 32 farming, so you can do them early on too, but if you don't have good stuff to grow them with, you'll end up losing money since the seeds are pretty expensive. If you want to know which seeds will make you the most money at the exact moment and current prices with your setup, I've left a link to the wikis page showing which herbs you can plant for profit. It has a really nice table that you can put in really any parameter for your exact situation. If you only care about what XP you get, you should probably focus on just doing the higher level herbs, but herbs give very little XP in the first place, so if you're going to take the time to do herb runs, you might as well just try to do it for profit. At 47 farming, you can now do watermelons. If you wanted to add any allotment runs, these aren't terrible for doing while you're doing your herb runs. If you're already doing allotments, then you have a lot of willpower already and you should be planting some watermelons. You can put your watermelons into compost bins to make super compost, which is very convenient for Ironmen. And if you're a pet hunter, then you want to do more patches and watermelons are not a terrible add-on for maybe some luck. The pet is very rare though, so good luck. At 61, you can switch from watermelon to snake grass, so if you're looking to get a little bit better XP from your allotment patches, this is a good way to go about it, and it's convenient for Ironmen who need prayer potions. Unfortunately, they have slightly worse odds for getting the farming pet, so if you're pet hunting, you don't really want to switch over, but again, the pet's super rare, so best of luck. The rest of this leveling guide is pretty straightforward, especially if you watch the trees section of the guide. You can plant yews and papayas at this point, which means you're likely only doing two tree runs a day, maybe three depending on the timing of course. All you really need to do now is add some of those special trees. At 72 you can do your one Calquat tree per day. This is an easy tree to add to just any regular tree run since it's super close to that Brimhaven patch. It's only once a day but it's really cheap and it's going to give you some bonus XP. At 74 farming, if you've done Song of the Elves, go ahead and add those crystal trees to each of your regular tree runs. Again, depending on which regular tree, I guess, but it's almost like having just an extra yew tree to grow, though it's more complicated to get a lot of crystal saplings. You could pass on this. Again, it's extra experience per day. At 83 plus, don't forget if you have any spirit seeds, you can start planting a few of those. Like I mentioned, they're pretty rare and untradeable, so you're not going to have a ton of them to plant most likely and won't be consistently adding them to runs. But I do suggest if you have a few seeds, you might want to save them to, uh, to have multiple locations planted in the long run. At 85, you can now add your Celastus trees or however you say them. You're only going to get one or two in a day max, but it doesn't take long for a little bit of bonus farming XP. If you're trying to get your farming done in the shortest calendar time other than Tithe Farm, you might as well be throwing these trees in there. And finally, at 90, you can start planting redwood trees at the farming guild. This thing takes forever to grow, so you don't really need to think about adding it to regular tree runs. Just whenever you need to head to the guild, you can go ahead and check its health and replant. It doesn't give a lot of XP for how long it takes to grow, but it really only takes a minute, not even, to just go check the health and get that big XP drop. So it is very worth your time. 
I mean, that's basically all you need to know for 99 farming, even though we're so deep into this guide, other than the alt methods that I'll get into really quickly. If you're looking for some sort of speed run for what to plant from one level 1 to 99, here we go. 1 to 15, you can just do allotment patches, you could even just stick to potatoes, you don't have to upgrade anything, and raking as many weeds as possible, maybe making some compost. If you hate the early levels, maybe you should do some quests. At 15, you can now start doing tree runs, you should always upgrade to the next best tree once you unlock them. At 27 farming, you have fruit trees to add to your tree runs, which means, I mean, every 16 hours you can do some fruit trees. And technically, just those fruit trees and regular trees is all you need to do for 99. At 35 farming, you should now add some hardwood trees just to get some extra XP. At 38 farming, you can start doing herb runs to help with XP, but mostly to start paying for some of the seeds you're buying. Toad flax are a very safe bet for consistent money, but check the link in the description if you want more accurate numbers. At 47, you can do watermelons in your allotment patches for a decent bonus XP, and at 61 farming, you can change over to snapgrass for even more XP. Afterwards, you can just start adding all those other special trees to your runs as you unlock them. You have the calquat, the crystal, the spirit, the celastrus, and redwood trees. Really, for the most part, if you're looking to get 99 farming, and you know how to plant trees, just plant your trees. Let's briefly talk about the other training methods that I already mentioned, starting with the Sorceress's Garden. This is not going to be a Sorceress's Garden guide since the vid's already too long. You shouldn't use the garden for any long-term farming training. As you can see, this is really just an alternative method for those first few levels. First, you need to speak to Osman outside of the al Karid Palace, and you do have to complete the Prince Alley Rescue Quest, so I'm sorry. Either way, gotta get some quests done, apparently. He'll talk to you about Skirk Juice and the Sorceress's Garden, and then you can head near the Shanti Pass to this house and speak to the Apprentice. She takes a little convincing, but she'll let you into the garden, where there's now four sections that you can choose to go into. You have Winter, Fall, Spring, and Summer. They require 1, 25, 45, and 65 thieving to get into, respectively. It really doesn't matter, though. The level 1 area, the Winter area, is fine for farming XP. Each section of the garden has a maze that you have to run through without getting caught by the spirits that are guarding it. At the end of the maze, you can choose to either pick some of that skirk fruit or some herbs. If you pick the herbs, you're going to get 50 farming XP and two random herbs. But if you pick the fruit, the farming XP depends on what garden you're in. The summer garden gives 60 per fruit, spring gives 50, fall gives 40, and winter gives 30. So if you're in the winter or fall, definitely just pick the herbs if you're trying to get those first few levels and you really only have to go through the maze a handful of times to get like 10 plus farming or at least 15 to get into that second section of the guide and what about the tithe farm i do have a full tithe farm guide linked in the description so i'm going to be very brief here the tithe farm is a great way to do farming xp on a normal grind rather than those passive and occasional farming runs you can get up to 100k xp an hour if you have 74 or higher farming and there's some helpful rewards including that farming outfit that i spoke about earlier overall tithe farm isn't super popular because it's not very enjoyable to do but if you needed fast farming xp not necessarily like convenient oh i can go do something else while it grows like i need to have a farming level in the next couple of days you could go do Tithe Farm and grind it out fairly quickly, though your time is really more well spent by just doing tree runs. If you don't have a specific deadline for your farming level, Tithe Farm isn't necessarily needed. I think that's everything I wanted to talk about with this farming guide, everybody. Other than that second part video, which uh, really just has the full runs and whatever tips that I've thrown in there. This was a pretty long video, so if you have any questions about it, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. I might even end up just throwing a timestamp in there if I answer your question in the video. I really don't mind showing you where in the video your information is, because again, this one's very long. Appreciate you all watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed or at least got some useful information. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe for some more content. I also stream on Twitch, and I have a Twitter and a Discord that are all linked in the description too. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and best of luck with your farming grind.